Hey guys, I'm going to be teaching you the most important part about CV2, logic. And I'm going to be giving you some examples and I want you to try some things on your own and I'll give you the answer after that. Alright, let's go look at some examples. Here is our first example. It is a basic Boolean display. This isn't usually how you would do it, but it is a display on how the if chip works. Alright, so here what we're doing is whenever we press this button, it'll tell us whether this button is pressed or not. Like that. And the way this works is on the button chip, we have an is pressed, which is a boolean. This outputs true or false. The way I like to see logic in CV2 is a question. Is it pressed? True or false? Is, that, is this statement true? Is pressed? Is this statement true? Right now, it is not true. So it's false. So it's outputting a false right now. And how booleans, you know, interact with the if chip is that when you execute the chip itself, it will check whether the boolean is true or false. And if it's true, it outputs then. If it's false, it outputs else. That's it. So this will display it. False on the else. True on the then. So it's, we're setting the text to be true. One, you know, it's outputting true. And the text to output false when it's outputting false. So that's what it's doing. So this is the very basic of CV2. Our if chip, it's always great for our logic part. It, you'll most likely always see in every circuit you look at an if chip. Fundamentals of CV2, you need to know how this works. So when this executes this button, this if, so when I press it, this is outputting execution, it'll check whether our condition is true or false to output, you know, whether then or else. And right now, if you want to guess, it is going to output false because it's not pressed. It is pressed, that question is, that statement is false. So when I press it, it is going to output into a text set text, which is a setting our text to be false. And if I make the statement true by making it pressed, then it outputs true. Then it'll say true. Another way we can use booleans are if values. These will output values depending on whether it is true or false instead of an execution. So what we have here is the same thing as we have before, but we're using an if value to output data instead of an execution. So like I said, the same thing. Whenever this button is not pressed, it'll output false. Whenever I press this button, it'll output true. All right. So let's look at what's actually happening here. So our if value is going to check whether our statement here, is the button pressed, true or not? So when it is not pressed, so when the statement is false, is pressed, is false, it'll output else, because it is not true. So then I'm making it output the data false into our text, text set text in our if value. But when it's pressed, I'm making it say true or then into the text set text to set that text. Just like that. So as you can see, whenever I, I execute it, this true is out, outputting because this statement is pressed is true. Because this is, you know, it is pressed, it is true. But when it's not pressed, false, you know, this statement is now false, it is not pressed, it will output false and set our text to be false. All right, guys, now I'm going to give you a little, ex I want you guys to try an example yourself. So what I want you to do is kind of like what we did earlier with the toggle button, depending on whether a that button is pressed, a light will turn on and off using the if and the toggle button output. Uh, there are basic ways to do it, like more simple ways to do it, but this is to help you understand the if, ver the if more so that you can understand that, oh, when this happens, this will happen. So I'm going to give you the chips you need, and you guys can try it on your own. All right, so here's everything you're going to need. You're going to need a toggle button, a regular button, an if, and a light V2. Right, here's a closer look of everything you need. A toggle button right here, a button, an if, and this light. What I want you to do is when this is pressed and you press this button, the light will turn on. When this is not pressed and you press this button, the light will turn off. That's what I want you guys to do. Like a little a switch like you know something like in an escape room you'd see like you need this to happen before you can do this um so you guys can have a second and in a second i'm going to show you what you need to do to actually get this to work the way i want you to do it all right so now i'm going to show you guys how this is actually supposed to look and how you're supposed to wire everything 
So first we're going to organize some things. So I'm going to move the button a little bit up here and this toggle button to be like right here. So I'm going to wire the is pressed to our condition because what we wanted to do is when this is pressed, we want the light to turn on. When it's not pressed, we want it to turn off. All right. And we need to, of course, execute this chip, the if chip, whenever we press this button because this is going to be our checker. This is checking our question. This button is checking our question. So I'm going to wire it whenever we press it to execute this if chip. All right. So now what's happening is when I press this button, it's checking our condition. Is this button pressed? Is pressed. Is this button pressed? All right. So what I wanted to do is turn the light on and off. All right. So when this is pressed, so when this is true, is pressed, I want it to turn on. So I'm going to wire then to turn on. And when it's not pressed, I want it to turn off. So I'm going to wire else to turn off. Let's move this up here so it looks a little nicer. And this is how we get it to work. So right now, the light is on because, you know, that's how it spawned in. I'm going to press it because this is not pressed. It's going to turn off. And when I press this, you know, it is now pressed in. I'm going to press it to turn on. All right, now I'm going to be teaching you how to use ands, nors, nots, and greater thans. You know, I'm not going to be going every single chip, but I am going to be explaining each one. And I'm going to be giving you some examples of each. So let's go to the uh, examples first because that'll be easier. You know, have like a little, you know, display of what each is. Uh, and then I'm going to be explaining them individually, greater thans and all that. And maybe some examples on the way. So let's go to the examples. All right, so here's our first example. We have the and. Um, this is the same setup as what we did earlier with our toggle buttons, but we're adding an and. So our bigger question is, is are both of the buttons pressed? So what we're asking, like I said, are both the buttons pressed? So you can technically say, is this toggle button and this toggle button pressed? It's like a question, like I said earlier. Is this toggle button and this toggle button pressed? That's our question. If they both are pressed, then we set it to true. You know, the text to be true. If they're not both pressed, they're false. That's what we're asking. So like I said, we're asking if both of them are pressed. Is pressed, is pressed, and. So are both of these statements correct? That's what we're asking. You can always add inputs to the and. You can ask, you know, are all of the, you know, for, are all of these true? But for right now, we're just going to ask the, these two. Are both these pressed? You know, are both these statements true? So right now, only one of them are true. This one, the top button is true. Only that one is true. So it's not going to do anything. It's outputting false because this statement isn't true. Are both of these true? If not, it outputs false. So when I press it, it still outputs false because this statement is false. This one may be true and this one is false. But we're also asking another question. Are both of them true? And is this and this true? That's what we're asking. So we're going to make both the statements tr true. So this and this is true. And this is true now because... Both of them are pressed. That's the question we're asking. Are both of them pressed? Is this button and this button pressed? If not, it's false. If they are, then it's true. That's the AND chip. Now we're going to go on to the OR chip, which is right over here. All right, so what we're asking here is, is, on, is one of the buttons pressed? You know, either OR of them. That's OR. And I did change it up here. I put an if value to display that you can still use if values with these booleans. So our question here, like I said, are either of these pressed? Is this or this true? That's what we're asking. We just need at least one of these to be true. I click, it makes it true. Because what's happening here is it's checking if one of them is pressed. Is this or this statement true? All right, and if it is, then we output true and false else, like we said earlier with this if value. All right, so both of them can be pressed, and this one can be pressed to be true. But at least one of them need to be true. All right, so now I'm going to show you the not. Uh, I don't have a setup for this one, so I'm going to be spawning in the not for you guys. I accidentally spawned typed that. There we go. So now we have this a not. So let me delete this. We only need one of them for what we're doing here. So a not basically, if it would load in, a not outputs the opposite of what's being put in. All right, that's basically what you need to know. So let me look away, come back. Um, so a not outputs the opposite. So right now, 
it's still outputting false. It's true now. So what's happening here is it is making this button the opposite. So technically in this sentence, is this button not pressed? That's our question. Is this button not pressed? So because that's our question, our statement, is it not pressed? It is true. It is not pressed. True. But is it not pressed? Well, that is false. It is pressed currently, so it is false. That what is that's a not. Now I'm going to go over some greater thans and equals. They're basically self-explanatory. They deal with numbers. Um, but I'll go over them. I'm not going to give any examples, but I'll go over them. Alright, now we're here with our trips. So I'm going to be explaining what these do, but there's going to be any examples. So these are kind of self-explanatory and greater or equal to. So whatever number you put into A must be equal greater than equal or greater than B. So if I put in 1 here, and this is 0, this will be true, because it is greater than. If this is 1, and this is 1, it'll still be true, because they're equal. If this is 1, and this is 2, it'll be false, because A is not greater or equal to B. Same thing with the greater than. A has to be greater than B. So if this is 1, and this is 0, it'll be true. If this is 1, and this is 1, it'll be false, because it's not greater than. They're equal. And if this is 1, and this is 2, this will be true, because A is not, and this will be false, my bad. This will be false, because A is not greater than B. Equals, this has to equal the same. So let's say you input someone's name, someone else's name here, it'll be false, because they're two different people. Or if this is 1 and this is 2, it'll be false, because it's not equal. This is 1 this is 1, it'll be true, because they're equal. So that's the basic of these. These the same thing is with the list get list list not less than or equal to and the less than. Same thing as those. You can also put this with a not and all that. Alright, now I'm gonna go over the execution integers. These might be a little more advanced, but I will <coughs> explain them as much as I can. So these are kind of like comp uh equals but in one chip. So let's say you have you know you want one and three. All right. So whatever we're putting in here, it's gonna check if it's equal to one or three. If it's equal to one, it will output here. If this number is equal to three, it'll output on here. If it's not equal to any of these, it'll output on failed because it is not equal to one or three. This match is not equal to any of these numbers. Same thing with the string. We can configure them. Uh, add in a character like hi. Same thing here, you put in uh, something, you put in a value here, it'll check if it's equal to high, and if it is, it'll output on the high. If it's not, it'll output on failed. So, on our value switch, they're like if values, but equal. So, what we're going to do is we're going to configure it, we're going to add a value. So, let's say 1, we're going to add this value. So, what we're matching is this. So whenever whatever's coming here is what we're checking to like match here. All right. So let's say this is equal to two. It's not gonna output this one. It's gonna output this value because this is our default value or failed value technically. It'll output our default, which will be whatever you put here. All right. And if it's if our match is equal to one, it'll output whatever is being input to here, whatever value you want it to output on data. Same thing with switch. I'm not gonna go into basics. It's the same thing as this. But those are basically our integer switches. Thank you for watching. Um, that was me giving my little demonstration uh, and explanation of what things do and how logic is the fundamental of circuits. If you have any questions, be feel, feel free to put them in the comments. I will answer them as much as I can, as best as I can. Um, and make sure... You know, there are classes if you want to take them. There are some great workshops that are mostly always happening. Maybe not circuits, but building as well. Uh, you can do in the Rec Room Creative Club. There's also some CV2 classes and some building classes you can do on the Rec Room website if you really want that. I'll be putting it down in the description. There'll be links to all workshops and Rec Room classes. So make sure to check those out. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial or game I'm refing. Bye.